For more on this, I want to bring in the Bonson Group managing partner, David Bonson. David, you know, I read the article and I even read some of the data that went with it. To a degree, I think it was a little disingenuous because there is a big difference between the 300 bucks you're talking about now and the $600 a week that was given initially. Uh, so have, have big businesses really seen the light? Well, I think that the, the issue here is that the lockdowns and the various restrictive measures from governors and mayors has gone on so much longer than was originally anticipated in the CARES Act. And, and of course, that $600 a week was the federal subsidy on top of the state amount that was being uh, delivered earlier. So the concern earlier was that people would have an incentive to not go get work, that there were too many people that were actually making more money on unemployment than they would in their various entry level type jobs. I think that what they're looking to now with this 300 a week subsidy is that it's somewhere in the middle. It shouldn't be so large that it incentivizes not looking for work. But really, all of it, I think, is transitory, is just sort of a middle ground thing because the ultimate place we have to be, the greatest unemployment benefit we could give is to open up the economy. I agree a thousand percent. What about a check to households? Uh, uh, you know, you've got some Republicans who are saying we need another twelve hundred bucks or twenty four hundred bucks for a couple. Right, where are you on that on that? Oh, it's a disaster of an idea. And, and the reason is it isn't targeted whatsoever. So you have people getting checks that uh, are not in any need. We already know that there is a very specific area where unemployment is most concentrated. Those in the food and beverage industry, hospitality, travel, the retail side, uh, to go give checks without any sort of discernment, I think is a very bad idea. It doesn't have a multiplier effect for stimulus and it misses the whole right. point. What we need to do is be supporting business. I want to uh, speak on business and capitalism here. Uh, there is a major push right now to discredit Milton Friedman's legacy. Uh, I'm sure you've read about it. What's your take on this? Because I think it's just the very beginning. Well, I, I've written about it quite a bit, Charles, with some of my writing at National Review. And, and, and as you know, um, you and I see this issue the same. Um, it isn't a small thing. It's a big deal and it's ideological. And ultimately, should this sort of woke capitalism that says we're not here to serve the shareholder, profits are not what needs to drive the endeavors of corporate America, but rather our, our primary function is this sort of nebulous concept of world service and so forth. Um, if they win in this battle of ideas, it is a really, really fatal blow to the American experiment. It goes without saying that all of us are to be good stewards. All of us are to be uh, interested in the needs of mankind and exercise virtue in what we do. We're talking here about the actual silo of the American business. It's sphere sovereignty, which is the fancy term for what it's actually there to do, is grow profits. Now, as it grows profits, it's right. serving its vendors. It's serving its customers. That's the whole point right. of free enterprise. Milton Friedman's work here is totally unimpeded, and this effort in corporate America needs to stop. All right, David, I'll put you down as a maybe. By the way, shout out to you. Last time you were on, you told us to stick with those oil stocks, and they have been rocking, my friend. We'll see you again soon.